that's all. You know, you know, I actually get more fulfillment and more enjoyment out of watching other people succeed than I do succeeding my own self because I'm used to it. You know, I'm used to being successful, and uh, so generally it's not a like my ego, my validation, my ego validation is, is, is not very that much important to me. Uh, what is important to me is watching you out there, the, the viewers and everybody, is getting people out there to live stream. That's, that's actually way more important to me. And helping other people. And that goes for people that are watching online, right? More than happy to like help you out in any way possible. Because um, I want to see you succeed as well. Succeed, you know, and, and, and become successful at this. Um, let's think about well, what else we could talk about here. Uh, I haven't gotten to. Yeah, gee, I uh, wish I could really get like somebody up to get out there and, and, and like get started here on live stream, but I don't think that's going to be possible at the moment. Well, Clark, we're also um, we're going to do another one, I think, with okay. the Linux Club before the end of semester. So next time we'll make sure we've got the right. It'll make set, sure we have all the And we'll have some other people who are interested in the technical aspects of it. So yeah, which is. I really would like to give you guys a detailed exp uh, explanation of how it works, and not that you're, uh, it's not like that you're going to need to sometimes, but I think it's really important to understand the foundation of how the technology works, because it will enable you to do things that you weren't, that you didn't think you were going to be able to do um, when, once you know how the technology works. And it's not, it's not, it's not any more difficult than maybe first year chemistry or uh, what else can I say? It might be similar to, or maybe your uh, honors English, or something that requires a little bit of effort uh, to understand. Right. And, uh, and if you need information, you can always hit my website. I, I try to keep a bunch of stuff up there for people. So if you want to go on, go to activiststream.com. Uh, and now that uh, the, the site is open for registration, that if you have information and things that you would like posted on the calendar, uh, that are pertaining to live streaming, feel free to do so. Or if you have an event that you would like to see covered, post it and uh, on the website and uh, because that's a, a good way of, of providing, uh, hopefully we can build up a database of information that people can refer to in the future. And, uh, um, and that goes, let's, let's get into from there, I think I can talk about copyright, um, <laughs> which is a major pain in the ass. Uh, because you're going to find out when you go out and live stream that one thing is that you're not, like you can pick an event to do and you can take your camera and you can focus it in on things and what you want to see and you want other people to see, but you're not ultimately responsible for what goes on of the things that you live stream about. Like it's one thing to be involved in, you know, being a witness for peace, but it's another thing to, uh, like when you're reporting on something and then somebody starts playing it, uh, some song in the background, for instance. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, we had it happen here yeah. recently with our uh, CCF birthday, <clears throat> and uh, where uh, I just happened to have the live stream going. That was at the end of your live stream that you were doing that day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually went back and looked at it, which I generally don't do. Look at my live streams. Mm -hmm. Once they're up there, they're up there. But. Uh, where uh, that DJ who was actually with the band, who held the copyright on the music, got flagged, flagged, I got flagged on, first time I'd ever been flagged on YouTube for copyright violation. And uh, I got a notice from uh, Universal Music Group and uh, Empire Distribution. And uh, I was pissed off. That was one time I let my temper get a little best on me there. But uh, I was able to, uh, deal with the uh, Empire Distribution people, and they removed the claim that they had to my copyright once they realized what was going on. And then, uh, rather than go around and around with the idiots, the, uh, mm -hmm. the idiot agents down there in uh, Los Angeles with Universal Music Group, I, rather than get involved in a big legal dispute, I decided that, um, I looked at the stream again and I decided to mute the, the volume on their sound at the time that that song was playing. And not because I wasn't willing to stand up for my rights, it's just that I didn't want to be, I'm only one person, I didn't want my attentions to be diverted into something negative when it's more important for me to come here to City and, uh, and help you guys out and help the students out here, you know, because I'd much rather build stuff 
for other people. I'd rather be much involved in the construction of something positive than, uh, than constantly dwelling on negative things. And remember that when you're dealing with trolls, don't let yourself get wrapped up in negative crap. And the same way it goes for your live streams. Um, try to cover the, the positive things of things. Don't always look for negative stuff to, to report on. Um, because you're, that's going to be, it gets imparted in, into your viewership. Um, you create this uh, energy, for lack of a better word, a, uh, uh, what is the word for it, zeitgeist, that you're creating. That, you know, your thoughts and what you do has very powerful, it's a very powerful force that influences things. And so uh, you don't want to influence people negatively. Um, you want to influence them positively. Because that's the way you win viewers and you win followings is by doing positive things, not by doing negative things. Uh, other things is uh, people really like to watch, and this is really important. And sometimes I feel like it's called they call it riot porn, um, which personally I disagree with. Um, riot porn is basically uh, live streams of people getting their asses kicked by the police. Okay, now that might work for fascists. But we all know that fear is not the best motivator at all by a long shot, and that uh, love is always going to be the best motivator on these things. So, uh, uh, you know, when I'm out there as a witness for peace, I'm out there engaged in, in live streaming riot porn more than what, what I'm out there is to love the people that are demonstrating to keep them from getting their butts kicked. Okay? Um, and that's generally why most live streamers are out there. Same question. Sure. Um, What's the difference between the protection from live streaming versus just like old recordings, like versus legal protection? It's real time. Broadcast in real time, which is you know the major difference, right? Uh, the people that are watching it will get maybe a two or three second delay on what you're watching, and uh, it's important to do it live because then you can evoke an immediate response from people. And I've actually been able, like I said, I've been able to organize stuff right online doing live streams and have people call in the police department to remind them, the police, to act like human beings. Yeah. Now, you know, and, and uh, trust me, that police department, no matter how much you'd like to hate on them, and I know there's a lot of people out there that do, uh, they're not worthy of your hate, first of all. And then the second thing is, is that um, if you're going to go there and you're going to hate on them, they're not going to be as responsive as if you try to approach them in a reasonable, with a reasonable attitude and open-minded attitude. Because uh, there are people too, and they do like to be loved, just like everybody else. And so if you show them a little respect, uh, I can tell you with my dealings with the police department, and I am one of the most vocal critics of San Francisco Police Department in the city of San Francisco. I show up at a lot of hearings, and I used to make it my business that when anybody got arrested for medical cannabis, that I would back them up in court and do everything possible to defeat the police. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you treat them with a little dignity and respect, um, you're going to get treated with some respect and some dignity. It doesn't even matter if you get arrested. Because you have to remember that police officers are, um, they're obligated to enforce the law. And the moment that they refuse the, uh, an order, direct order from their, their immediate subordinate, um, through the chain of command, then they are subject to all kinds of like legal penalties, loss of their pensions, uh, loss of any kind of opportunities that might come up down the road, um, and it ruins their life basically. Okay, they were not able to make money, uh, they won't be able to find a job, and you know, hey, look, uh, you know, and we, we know not all police officers are, are good people, we know that already. Um, a lot of them are pretty much uh, full of their own power. And, uh, but if you treat them with a little bit of respect, um, I actually had undercover police officers that I vowed it on the internet mm -hmm. and had them come up to me years later and say that they thanked me because they didn't like busting potheads. Mm -hmm. So uh, they didn't really like that aspect of their work. So uh, just keep that in mind. You know, you don't have to love on the police, which I don't recommend. I don't ever trust them. But at the same time, treat them with a little dignity and respect. And you'll be surprised at the response that you get. Uh, especially when they're out there beating people up. And I can tell you this from first-hand experience. So, uh, and they will cooperate with you. Um, and just do yourself a favor, never uh, disobey a reasonable request that the police officer makes. Okay, if there's, 
because sometimes, you know, they are out there to protect you. And a lot of times they are there at a demonstration, and they're not there for a specific purpose of engaging protesters. They're out there to ensure the right that you have for your First Amendment rights are respected. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, I kind of feel like I'm missing something. Uh, We're, we're, we're almost running out of time, folks. Yeah, I don't. Um, I think you've covered a lot of the basics. I mean, does anybody have anything online? Is there anybody anybody chatting? Uh, no, not since we've come back on. So we've oh. still got still got some viewers, but nobody's really got any questions at the moment. Um, okay, yeah. Well, um, I just I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up here real quick because uh, everybody's got to move, and I'm I'm kind of like I'm still hungry. Uh, again, I'm gonna say this. Uh, Feel free to contact me. Like I'm gonna repeat that again, because people, I'm a really nice guy, uh, and uh, I don't like I say I don't involve myself. I try not to get myself engaged in negative behavior. But if you have anything that you want to know, if you need any help, uh, any questions you might have about journalism in particular, uh, the wealth of my experience, and I have an enormous wealth of experience uh, and wisdom um, that I'm a resource for you to draw upon. I have no problem with that. I love answering people's questions as long as they're not keep asking me the same question over and over again because um, you should learn after the first or second time. But yeah, just come at me at any time. Uh, like I say, I'm going to pick up my phone or I answer my email or whatever. Um, I really don't mind. The more people that get involved, the better. Um, because we don't want live streamers to be out there feeling like they're all alone when they're doing their work. You know, it's important that they be recognized. And if you've got a few bucks and a live streamer's hitting you up online with for a little bit of money, uh, remember that they wouldn't be asking for it if they didn't need it. So, uh, you know, and, and you'd be surprised what a $10 donation will do. So, uh, if anybody wants to, uh, was thinking of which, if anybody wants to donate any money, um, I don't usually require a lot, but um, it always helps. Uh, you can, there's a, uh, you can collect the support button at the activiststream.com channel, and then uh, that'll take you to a place where you can uh, leave a donation. Um, currently, I'm filing for a, uh, what is it, uh, oh Lord, uh, tax exempt status from IRS. So in the future, when you make a donation, you'll be able to put it on as tax, dedu tax deduction, because um, we're not engaged in specifically political reports. So we're not, we're not, we don't have to we were, we were allowed to give people tax deductions. Mm -hmm. And the money that you make uh, from your donations, and we are going to be fundraising here within the next few months, uh, the all the money from your donations will be going to supporting live streamers out in the field, uh, doing things like buying cameras for people, providing cameras, providing all the websites and all the other resources that you might need. And also, as well as if you get arrested, we're live streaming. <coughs> it's a valid situation that will also be raising money for that as well, providing you with an attorney. Um, and that's another thing I'd like to, to talk about is the, uh, well, maybe I don't know, I think that's about it. Just remember, and, and also, like, don't, like, like, and I have a problem with this sometimes, and as bold and provocative as I like to be, that sometimes I get a little bit intimidated by people. Right. Don't let yourself be intimidated. Uh, you have a right to be there. You have a right to, to uh, do what you do. Um, remember that as a live streamer, you're providing a public service for people, whether they realize it or not. Even if you're making a little bit of money off of it, you're still providing a public service. Um, so, uh, you know, be out there and be aware that, you know, you do have support at all times by some of the people that you would never, by perfect strangers. And those people that are watching are going to support you regardless. Um, I guess since we don't have any more questions, that's it. I hope nobody fell asleep. Uh, I have a at any rate, uh, Gabby's got a question. I have a question. Uh, sure. So I'm going to keep you in mind about live streaming at, as a state. So because I know they have always events, and I don't know if a lot of people cannot make it. So now I can know about live streaming. We had this live stream at CSSC, so it was something interesting. I'm going to keep you guys in mind for us. Okay, sure. And human as well. 
yeah. he's not like tied well, up in his classes. He's not busy with school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he's not going to be. State. He's not going to be making that same mistake. SF State yeah. has a nice. They have. Um, they have like really cool events, and uh, the stability events I went to were really nice. So I'm going to keep that in mind. Yeah. And keep in mind when you're doing events. Again, you're always subject to copyright law, regardless. Um, Ustream is not really hot about that um, because uh, the whole process of live streaming is not a pirated act. What we do, uh, like I say, is, is that sometimes you just can't help for things to happen the way they happen. And there's nothing you can do about it. And so you should make that clear when somebody's like, you know, put a sentence or two on your uh, page that says that, uh, you know, that you're not, you know, that you're uh, covering as a news reporter and that uh, any, uh, any vi- copyright violations are incidental. And always acknowledge that you're violating a copyright when you get it, like, contacted by Google, <laughs> for instance. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, yeah, this is the other thing I wanted to tell you, is, is that all, it's a good idea to, uh, and if you want to get your live streams out there in the world, to give it all away. And what the way you can do that so it doesn't get stolen is to uh, license it under Creative Commons. Uh, it's called a Creative Com- Commons Attributions License. And because your live streams, as a, as a live streamer, you're, I've had it happen, and, and, and he will back me up on this, uh, that some of my stuff got posted onto a MSM site. And, uh, um, and actually television, too, the evening news. And uh, they actually called me up and asked me for permission. I think it was Channel 7, a couple of channels, Channel 7 and Channel 2 called me up. Uh, but uh, when you have a Creative Commons Attributions license, that means that you're free to use any of the material as long as it's not for commercial purposes or, uh, and they have to attribute what the content is to you. So uh, when everybody uses my live stream that I really, uh, I mean, I don't care, you know, if somebody wants to use my work, or, you know, it's, to me that's the biggest compliment in the world when somebody's trying to plagiarize my work. But um, just to make sure that the, the brand goes on there, you know, so people will know to follow you in the future. So that's kind of important. Make sure that that uh, that you have that Creative Commons license, and that evol- and affords you a lot of legal protection that you would not normally have if you did not put a statement on your on your thing. And I would advise against doing copyrights because uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And if you're gonna, if you don't want to be subject to copyright violations, well, like I say, you always treat people like you want to be treated, and and you don't bring that energy into your uh, into your content. Um, and that's real important. Uh, I'll be back in the next few, uh, another week, I guess, that I'm going to be talking more. A couple of weeks, probably. And uh, about more live streaming, about more issues, because I've got, I have enough material here. I could go on for like days. Um, and remember to hit the website, activiststream.com. And uh, I'm going to be uh, live streaming here at 6 if I can make it to this meeting. So you can watch, it's going to be actual meeting of, we're organizing a march for Occupy Monsanto, or not Occupy. Uh, it's just a non-GMO, an anti-Monsanto yeah, march. But it's pretty much directed against Monsanto. Directed against Monsanto. Right, it's going to be a worldwide march. So we're organizing uh, a march uh, for May the 25th, so it's going to be an organizing meeting tonight. So if you're interested, you want to find out what's happening here in the city, and what we're doing here, um, and bring it to your own locality, uh, do so. Uh, we'll be up at 6 or around then. Same time, same channel, and uh, our same channel and same URL. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, and thanks for coming to the lecture. And uh, thanks to City College.